So, you want to learn about charcoal? Then this is the video for you. I've uh, made a lot of step-by-step -step drawing tutorials up until this point, but I actually had something funny happen to me, so I want to tell you a story. So my wife, she is learning how to do watercolor painting, and she's had a really rough time trying to find videos that not only teach how to do watercolor, but that are a true step-by-step -step tutorial. And so it got me thinking when it comes to like my own drawing tutorials, like, hmm, like I hope that I can put something together and make a video that doesn't skip steps, right? Where you're not getting lost because it's kind of like when you're sitting there in a math class, right? And you're like, let's say you're learning long division for the first time and you're sitting there and you're like following along, you're like, okay, okay. And then the teacher does something in his head and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, dude, like where'd the 12 come from? Oh, you do this, this, and this. Oh, that that's wonderful. Can you, you mind writing it on the board next time instead of doing it in your head, <laughs> right? So it's this kind of a thing. So I'm hoping that this video ixnays that for you and you're able to walk away from it with full comprehension of how to use charcoal pencils. Now I'm going to be teaching you about charcoal pencils as they apply to how I draw, which of course is what I call the three layered method. So I'm going to be breaking it down and I'm going to be explaining everything uh, by definition as far as the different types of charcoals that are out there on the market and then having a laser focus on charcoal pencils and exactly what the differences are between soft medium and hard rated charcoals and then we're going to be going into a demo where i'm going to be doing the entire demo in real time okay and that's something that a lot of you guys have asked me to do like hey like your tutorials are great but can you actually do some more principal ones that are completely real time so that we can follow along and draw with you. So I was like, well, absolutely, I can do that. So I'm gonna be showing you how to use your soft charcoals for base layering. I'm gonna be showing you how to use your medium charcoals for targeting your low values. I'm gonna be showing you some really fancy brush work and smudger work. And yeah, I hope that it's really comprehensive. And if you're new here, make sure you Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all your bell notifications so that you don't miss out when our latest and greatest videos hit the channel. All right, let's do this. Okay, so how to use charcoal pencils. Now, I think it's important for you to understand, especially if you're new to the medium, that there are uh, three uh, modern types of charcoal. Basically, they come in uh, you know, th three different uh, forms, if you will, and I'm going to cover um, each one of those. So the first is probably what you're most used to, with compressed charcoal. Um, and this comes in the form of pencils. And of course, there are uh, multiple types uh, of pencils available. And uh, the second is a uh, vine charcoal. And these come in uh, compressed sticks and there are multiple sizes uh, of these sticks. And then the third is what they call powdered charcoal. And that is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a, it comes in powder form and there are multiple uh, grades uh, of charcoal. And I'll explain that a little bit more in depth uh, here in a bit. But uh, compressed charcoal, right? And this is what the video is all about. So compressed charcoal is just another word for uh, charcoal pencils. And it's important to note here that there are three types uh, of pencils that I utilize um, with uh, the three layered method. Uh, the first is uh, soft uh, rated uh, charcoal pencils. And these ones have uh, the least amount uh, of binder infused uh, in them from the manufacturing process. So they're perfect uh, for base layering and uh, you know, really building up uh, our uh, lower values. So the second is uh, medium. Uh, charcoal and uh, the medium charcoal has more binder uh, infused uh, in it 
from the manufacturing process and because of that it makes it perfect for uh, line work and uh, going in and, and pinpointing uh, low, low values. The medium is definitely the Goldilocks of the three. So, And then uh, the last one is hard uh, charcoal pencils. And these have the most amount of binder infused in them, so it makes them perfect, picture perfect, for uh, detail work. Uh, you know, things like wrinkles, uh, feathers, if you are doing line work where you want to have uh, like a really nice thin line quality, then hard charcoal is uh, going to be the one that you want, okay? Okay, so now compressed charcoal. You know, so when it comes to compressed charcoal and the three-layered method, these are the three grades that you want to be aware of. So, um, and I always run quad tips on my pencils, and this is pretty much what they look like. Now the second one here, vine charcoal. This is, uh, this is what vine charcoal looks like. Um, I'm kind of biased in that I do prefer compressed charcoal just because um, these uh, vine charcoals do get kind of messy. And just like they're soft, medium, and hard rated, there are soft, medium, and hard rated um, vine charcoal that you can find. So, and of course these come in all sorts of different sizes, small, medium, large, um, it's just really up to you which one you prefer. And then powdered charcoal, okay. So basically what I've done here is I've taken some soft charcoal from a pencil and I've grinded it into a powder form and put it into um, this candle top here. And here's my number six brush. One of the reasons why you um, really want to get comfortable with powdered charcoal, especially with the three layered method, is powdered charcoal is what you use for your base layers, okay. So that's pretty much everything uh, defined and, and uh, written out. But now let me show you what a uh, demo looks like. Whoo, all right. So I know that there's some, uh, some of you that do your circles um, freehand, but uh, I like this little guy, you know, a little compass. You can pick this up from the art store for only a couple bucks. And you just go ahead and set it in the center and then just kind of really quickly do a nice little little circle here. And now we have the center of our eye. And now this allows us to be able to take our uh, HB graphite pencil and just very lightly kind of draw out the upper eyelid of this drawing here. The trick to this step um, is when you're drawing out your outline phase, um, when using the three layered method, even though you're using graphite, still uh, keep it in mind that you want to use a very light pressure control. And that way, if uh, you don't quite nail your proportions right out of the gate, you'll be able to go back in with um, an eraser and you'll be able to you know, lift that graphite right off of the paper. And because you use a very light pressure control, there's not gonna be any residual, right? There's not gonna be any graphite left on the paper. And more importantly, you will not have uh, scratched uh, the paper. So that's the importance of a real light hand uh, in this step. But one of the reasons why I wanted to do an eye is because for the most part, this design is um, fairly simple and it makes um, for someone who is uh, new to the medium, or maybe they're not new to charcoal, but maybe they're new to the three layered method. Uh, this is um, the perfect uh, design to start to really build that confidence and start to understand principally how um, these different uh, charcoals work, right? And how they work in tandem with one another so that we can accomplish um, convincing drawings and fairly easily. But I am a uh, big proponent of uh, having fun when we draw. I think that as long as you're having fun, um, that's really all you need to worry about. I've, I've talked with uh, students in the past and I always say it's not about drawing something perfect, it's about learning something new. And so that's all we're doing. We're just having fun and learning something new. The outline phase here, think of this pretty much as the framework, right, of uh, your charcoal to come. So just like when you see a house being built, right, it's, 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 uh, 
it's only the framework, right? It's only the frame of the walls, the two by fours, the two by sixes, the beams. Um, it's far from finished, right? And so that's the same principle here. This is just the framework. These are the beams and the two by fours, the two by sixes of our drawings. So I just think of it that way. Kind of clean this up a little bit with our pencil click eraser and kind of get rid of any unwanted uh, lines here. And then I know I did um, the center of the eye with my compass, but you can just go in and you can you can do it freehand as well. I just I'm a big big advocate for you can never have enough tools so because tools give you abilities that you just simply don't have with your pencil in your hands so okay so this is just a scratch piece of paper i call this my tone check paper now i'm just going to take my soft charcoal here that i've graded into a powder form okay and i got my trusty number six brush here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to load my brush up with a fair amount a fair amount of powdered charcoal here and then I'm going to check that tone right make sure it's what I want and then I'm going to just start on the line here and just very lightly very lightly I'm just going to pull this from left to right notice notice the the angle and the direction of um, my uh, my strikes here with my brush okay we start from the bottom and then we can start to work our way up right up the eyelid start at the bottom of the eyelid and then work your way up and you see how we get a nice gradation from a lower value where we start to a higher value as we work out and go towards the top of the eyelid see that and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to do this demo for you guys in real time is because i want you to see this i want you to understand the, the subtleties right the subtleties of charcoal and then if we want some more, right, just load up. And when you dab the paper, if you have a lot of excess charcoal that falls off of your brush and onto the paper like that, that's how you know that your brush is fully loaded. And whenever that happens, whenever you get a bunch of excess of charcoal hitting the paper like that, you are almost guaranteed <laughs> to have a very low value um, when you go to strike the paper. So just keep that in mind, okay? We're starting from, from the bottom of the eyelid and then we're working our way up. And the cool thing about brush work when it comes to using powdered charcoal and really getting a nice distribution for your base layer, you don't have to push hard, okay? You don't have to push hard at all. Nice, light pressure control. I've said this in other tutorials that I do, but everything that you do with the three-layered method, whether you're doing base layers, with your soft charcoal or you're building low values with your medium charcoal and drawing out defined lines and building implied lines or even if you're just doing detail work with your hard charcoal let's say you're maybe doing some cross hatching or you're putting in some some veins or some wrinkles or an eyelash all with a light hand it's important you keep that in the back of your mind and that you understand that when you go to to your drawing because it'll help you okay And then here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull down. Notice how the brush is fairly unloaded here. I'm just kind of working with the charcoal that I've already put down onto the paper, kind of doing some cross hatching. I pulled down from top to bottom, and now I'm going from left to right and getting a nice blend on that eye. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the bottom here, the bottom of the eye, right where that skin's at. I'm gonna just brush that. And what this does is this kind of gives the eye that that illusion of that roundness, right? Because because eyes are, are fairly round. And so this is why we're doing this. You can do this with a smudger, but I, I, I kind of caution you, just do it with a brush. Anytime you want to venture out and you have a fairly high value um, gradation between your values, right? A fairly light, soft blend, just use your brush instead of your smudgers, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is this is another way that you can use soft charcoal. This is a soft charcoal pencil, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm establishing the outer line of the center of the eye, and then I'm going to very lightly build up that low value because the center of the eye here is going to be one of our lowest 
values overall for the entire drawing. But just like this, just nice, just nice tight circles. Again, not pressing hard. If you press too hard, you'll scratch the paper and then you'll have a whole nother problem on your hands, right? So just nice and light. One of the key things to remember when it comes to um, your saturation in your low values is even distribution, okay? Even distribution will lead to an even saturation, okay? And that's one of the reasons why you don't wanna vary your pressure control. You wanna go in light, you wanna stay light through the whole thing, okay? So just keep that in mind. All right, while we're here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, very lightly build up some lower values as well. Now, remember how in the first part of the video when we were writing everything out, I said that um, it's the amount of binder that's the main differentiator between soft, medium, and hard charcoals, right? Well, when it comes to soft and your medium charcoals, those are going to produce your lowest values, right? The richest saturation in the blacks of your drawing. And the reason why is because they have um, the least amount of binder in them amongst the three, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my number seven smudger and I'm just gonna show you this. So notice how you can blend. We can blend this soft charcoal. And because there's little to no binder in the soft charcoal, it spreads and blends very easily. I mean, you barely have to touch the charcoal and it's gonna give you a nice blend. It's gonna give you a very solid um, gradation across um, values when it comes to building up value relationships as well. So, so this is how we accomplish that. And that's one of the things that I talked about with the medium charcoal when we were writing everything out is how you can pinpoint low value builds. Well, you can go in after you've pinpointed those low value builds because of course it'll be gritty, right? It'll have that grainy texture and you can hit those low value builds with your smudger and just blend it and it's nice and smooth, very appealing to your viewer's eye. So that's what we want. Yeah, just run this up and that grittiness just, just goes away. And here's another cool thing that you can do as well. Once you get a really nice uh, foundation of charcoal on the tip of uh, your smudger, what you can do is you can start to pull that charcoal and you can start to create what they call implied lines, okay? There's two different types of uh, line work that um, the three-layered method utilizes a lot. And those are, um, what they call defined lines, which is basically where you take like a charcoal pencil and then you run that line from one point to another or implied lines, which are what this is right here. Notice how there's a line right here that I'm creating with my smudger. However, it's only implied, right? I'm not going in with a hard or a medium charcoal pencil and putting a super defined line on there with a very, very thick line quality, right? And a, a very, dark line weight. I'm just going in and hitting it and that line is uh, very much implied. And seeing as how we're on the subject, uh, line quality, I'll, I'll define that for you uh, real quick. Line quality is, when, when I say that, what I'm meaning is, is that, that the thickness or the thinness of the line that I'm talking about, right? When I say line weight, line weight that describes the strength of your line by how light or how dark it is, okay? So just keep that in mind. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna work on my saturation here in the center of the eye. And I'm just gonna take my smudger and just uh, very softly kind of go back and forth. You know, little, little X's, little crosses, you know, you know, nice tight little circles. It's really up to you. It is really up to you how you want to, uh, to blend your charcoal. But notice how that grittiness just disappears right before our eyes. That's what we want. And that's what smudgers allow for. That's what smudgers allow for. And I'll make sure that if you don't have uh, a lot of these tools, I'll have links in the description um, of this video. So if you want to uh, pick up any of these tools and, and uh, add them to your uh, drawing kits, um, you'll definitely be able to, okay? 
Your tools are everything. They're absolutely everything. My dad used to say that a mechanic is only as good as his tools. And honestly, I know that he was talking about automotive, but I think that that same principle goes for any craft. It doesn't matter if you're a carpenter, a glass blower, any artisan, any art form, your tools are everything. And then here, what we're doing is you just take your smudger and just pull straight out and just take that charcoal at a nice 90 degree angle straight away from the center of the eye. Just like this here. See that? Just like that. And what this does is this allows us to start to build low values throughout the center of the eye, but we're doing it um, in an implied way, right? And this just really boils down to understanding exactly how charcoal works. Now you could do this with a medium and a hard charcoal, but because of the binder, right? Because of the amount of binder is ever increasing on both of those grades, one of the things you'll find is that your spread, it'll spread, but it's not gonna spread as smoothly. And that's because there's more binder than there is charcoal, especially as you go all the way to hard, right? Think about it, if something's pure charcoal, it's gonna spread super easy. If it's half charcoal and half binder, half glue basically, you can think of it like that, then it's not gonna spread nearly as easy, okay? And then here we're just pulling our smudger and doing some, some tighter lines. So we basically have some different line weights, right? And uh, different line qualities even though all of these lines with our smudger are implied, okay? Line qualities and line weights aren't applicable to just define lines, okay? They apply to implied and defined, so just keep that in mind. And then here what I'm doing is I'm taking my smudger and I'm just building up uh, the boundary of uh, the center of the eye right here. And I did a video on this once a long time ago, and I, I think I called it how to draw without pencils, right? And that's the cool thing about um, charcoal as a medium is that you can draw and you can do things like this where a huge portion of your drawing is actually not even done with charcoal pencils so much as it's done with uh, smudgers, right? But it's important when you're learning about the three-layered method and you, especially when you go to apply it onto paper for your own drawings to understand that it's not just pencils. Pencils are three tools of the greater toolkit that you'll have and that you'll use in your drawings that'll give you the kind of effects that you want. So, And then here what I'm doing is I'm just taking my smudger and now I'm pulling back in on all of the other implied lines from the outer ring that I just created. See that? Now here's another thing that you can do, okay? You can actually take your smudger and you can grab some soft charcoal powder and you can build up the amount of charcoal on the edge and then watch this. What we're gonna do is you know how the eyelid kind of sits back into your eye socket? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna build up the top of this eyelid with a lower value, okay? And this just helps me convey form in my drawing a little, a little more, right? We're not worried about winning any awards here, right? We're just having fun. That's all we're doing. The whole point of this demo is to show you all of the different things that you can do and exactly how the charcoal works, right? Soft charcoal acts differently onto the paper than medium charcoal does. And a medium charcoal pencil acts differently than a hard charcoal pencil does. And so the way that they act will dictate how we use them within the three layered method, okay? All right, and so now the cool thing is, is now that we have more charcoal on 
the end of the smudger, we can go in and we can continue to blend and we can continue to build certain low values. Now here what I'm doing is I'm taking a medium charcoal pencil, okay? Pretty much all the work that we've done up until this point in this drawing has been with soft charcoal. But now what we're doing is we're taking our medium charcoal pencil and we're going to establish some eyelashes, okay? And one of the things you'll realize when you start to draw this out for yourself, um, and it would probably be a best practice actually, if you wanted to try to do this with a soft charcoal, one of the things you'll realize is that your line quality will be very thick, but not in a good way. <laughs> the reason why your line quality using a soft charcoal pencil is going to be thick like that is because it, there's little to no binder in it. So that charcoal tip as you run these lines is gonna wanna just fall apart, right? Now, using the medium charcoal pencil, you have a lot more binder in it, but not nearly as much as the hard charcoal. So as you can see, you still get a very rich saturation, right? You get a nice low value, but at the same time, because there's more binder in it than there is with the soft charcoal, that tip keeps its integrity through each line pull much better than that soft charcoal will, okay? And, and when you reach this step in your eye drawing, I want you to also play with the hard charcoal. I want you to put in some eyelashes with your hard charcoal pencil so that you can start to get a feel for exactly what those lines look like, right? How does the line quality and the line weight vary across those three different grades of charcoal, okay? In drawing, you learn by doing. You can sit there and you can listen to podcasts and you can and you can watch tutorial videos all day long, but until you actually start to draw, that's when the lessons and the knowledge and the understanding really come full circle. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. And if some of your eyelashes look a little gritty, right, and they're not nearly as smooth as you would like, don't worry about that, because I'm going to show you some really cool tricks with brushes and smudgers that you can use in order to, to make that grittiness go away. And then right here, what I'm doing is I'm just establishing a little bit thicker of a line because a lot of these eyelashes they kind of come together um, you know at the end of the eyelid right and so I'll run this line from left to right and then I'll go in and I'll do some like upward strokes like this see this like some W's and some U's because those eyelashes, they come down and then they go up, right? Kind of like a banana, if you want to think of it that way, just like that. And be subtle with it, right? I mean, less, less is more. Your eyelashes on the left side are going to be longer than your eyelashes as you move towards the center of the face. Kind of move this over here. I'm just gonna pull and as you pull, as you pull these lines, you, as you pull, you lift up as you conclude your line, right? And then what that'll do is that that line quality, it'll start thick and then it'll get nice and thin toward the end. Because if you just pull your line and you don't lift up as you conclude, that line, that eyelash is gonna have the same line quality all the way through. And that doesn't look realistic, right? So just keep that in mind. And then while we're here, let's start putting some of the, the bottom eyelashes on. And remember when it comes to eyelashes, okay, the more deliberate your strike is, the better it'll look, right? If you kind of go in and you're not fully committed and you strike the paper, it's, it's not going to... Uh, the line's not going to look nearly as saturated, okay? So just keep that in mind. But remember, I mean, this this is also your eye, right? So you make it look how you want. Try different things. 
Again, the eye is a perfect design to draw out, to, to learn different things and continuing to build your, your skill set. Right? That's what drawing is all about. You know, I hope to never know everything. I don't want to know everything. I always want to be learning something new. I always want to be growing. I think uh, it was Michelangelo, aged like 87 years old, he was quoted with saying, I'm still learning, right? It's the same principle here. Any artist that draws or you know does any kind of design work understands that. So just keep that in mind. Just kind of go in, establish a line right there. And then here's a cool thing is you can actually go in and I'm not necessarily putting a defined line as so much as this is what targeting low values looks like with a medium charcoal because I have a little bit more control, right? Than say the smudger and I'm able to go in and really establish those low values with, with a lot of accuracy, okay? And if you're doing this and you're thinking to yourself, well, this is kind of gritty, you know, right? When you're going in with your medium charcoal and you're building up a low value, uh, don't stress because you can go in with your smudger and you can blend that out just like we did with the soft charcoal when we were doing those targeted low values. You can do the exact same thing with the medium charcoal, okay? And while we're here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to establish the boundary of the center of the eye here because I want more of a saturation, okay? The center of this eye is kind of gritty still. It's not nearly as low in value as I would like. So now, just like I built it up and built up that base layer with the soft charcoal, I'm doing the exact same thing with my medium charcoal. And notice how that value is just getting lower and lower and lower. And that's what we want. And because the medium charcoal has more binder in it, then the soft charcoal, it rests on top of the soft charcoal very nicely. Okay. So now I'm gonna take my smudger and this is one of the things that you can do to try to rein in that grittiness, right? See this? Yeah, I'm kind of blending this just like this. And one of the things you'll notice is that low value definitely stays there, but that grittiness is blended away and that gradation is brought out with the smudger. But you just take your smudger like this and you just pull it along the line And this adds, you know, some shadow effects. Um, and it really brings out uh, the gradation in your eyelashes. And then we can kind of build up the end of that eyelid too, right? So like if you're drawing a female eye, like maybe um, your subject has eyeliner on, right? You can go ahead and you can you can blend that out. And this is the technique that I would use um, for uh, for the makeup and the eyeliner immediately um, around the edge of, of the eyelid. Then just like this, you can kind of establish the, the very edge of the top of the eyelid as well. But yeah, just like this, you just Pull it and lift up. There we go. That's looking good. But it's really up to you because, you know, when you're drawing, you don't have to blend out your eyelashes like this if you don't want to. Nine times out of ten, if you use a hard or a medium charcoal pencil that's nice and sharp, and you're very deliberate when you strike the paper and bring out those uh, individual eyelashes, nine times out of 10, you won't have to blend it like this. But the point that I'm trying to make here is I'm trying to show you just how charcoal acts, right? 
How does it talk to you? How does it tell you, oh yeah, no, that that's good, that's what I want to do, or no, dude, what are you doing, that's not going to work, right? <laughs> so, that's what this is all about. Okay, so now, just like we did before, we're going to take our smudger, we're going to add some charcoal, do some quick little pulls here, and now we're going to go into the center of the eye, and we're going to continue to build uh, our low values. And you can use your medium charcoal pencil, or if you're more comfortable and you want to move a little slower, you can use your smudger with your soft charcoal powder in this case. It is totally up to you. They will both give you the same effect. It's just a question of how much control do you want, right? So much of the time when we're learning something new, um, like say a new art medium, right? For example, um, so much of the time, you know, you, you tend to be reserved, right? Because you're, you're kind of unsure as to what is going to give you certain effects and you don't want to uh, get in over your head, right? You don't want to establish a low value that's say maybe too low. So this is a way that you can slowly build those low values and you can go at a pace that uh, doesn't overwhelm you right? So much of the time when people get overwhelmed with things, I know it's happened to me when it comes to learning a new art medium, it doesn't make it any fun, right? And most people don't waste their time doing things that are not fun. <laughs> so if you can go slow, you can really um, minimize uh, the possibility of getting overwhelmed, right? But just like this, this is all we're doing. And the cool thing is, is when you're doing these strikes, don't don't be afraid to put a strike here and then move over a whole strike thickness and hit the paper again. And that way, what you'll find is you'll be able to really pull out that that variance, right? That contrast, that that value scale from complete black to complete white, right? Especially in the center of the eye like this. I'm just going to swap out that. I'm going to put in some more eyelashes here. Something like that. There we go. Okay. And this is a medium charcoal pencil. And now this is, this is the other part, right? Remember how I said you could do either or? Well, I wanted to show you both. So the first uh, part was the smudger with your soft charcoal. And now here, when you have a little bit more confidence built up, you can go in with your medium uh, charcoal pencil and you can really start to pinpoint exactly where those uh, low values are, right? And again, I mean, these aren't defined lines, right? This is just the cool thing about the medium charcoal is that you will be using your medium charcoal for multiple things, right? Line work, of course, but then pinpointing low values and slowly building them, them up. And one of the reasons why I always build up my low values like this is because the pencil just allows for more control, right? Because when you think about it, a, a sharp pencil tip, you're going to be able to put charcoal exactly where you want it in your drawing, where even if you have a, a sharp smudger, it's, yeah, you do have a lot of control, but not nearly as much as you do with your sharp uh, pencil. So it's important to understand that so that if you need to make that adjustment in one of your drawings and you really need to go in and establish like, you know, a super low value, dude, gra grab your pencil, right? Grab your pencil instead of your smudger. So... And, and again, a lot of this specific video is just showing you what the possibilities are, right? Like, like what does what? How well does it do it? How well does it not do it, right? So it's this kind of a thing. But here what I'm doing is I'm just going through and I'm just doing quick, quick light pulls. And the whole point of this is to establish those, those very low values, right? 
and I'm getting line qualities that are super thin, right? And I'm getting line weights that are fairly dark, right? So a thin quality and a dark weight, okay? And this is one of the beautiful things about the three-layered method and the approach as a whole is that it's very much a layering process, okay? So kind of like how, you know, one of the analogies that I use a lot um, in my drawing tutorials is that when you give yourself the ability to layer your values, all of a sudden it's very forgiving. It becomes very forgiving because if you need to go darker, you can go darker. And if you need to go lighter, right? If you need to retrieve some high values, because you've done everything with a super light hand, when you go in to retrieve high values with your eraser, which I'll show you what that looks like in this demo here in a little bit as well, you just, you have this very holistic approach for someone who's maybe just getting into the medium, right? The three-layered method is not something that I was taught, it's how I draw. And Alan Watts said something that really made me think and actually was kind of uh, an inspiration to this channel as a whole, is he said that an artist is someone who performs certain works skillfully, but doesn't quite know how they do it. And so that was very much me when I was younger and before I started making these tutorials. And so I sat there after hearing that and I was like, hmm, He's absolutely right, because at the time, I wasn't teaching people how I drew, I just was drawing. And so because there was not a need for me to thoroughly understand how Braden drew, I didn't really think about it. But as soon as I understood that I need to start teaching people, I was like, okay, well, I need to understand exactly how I draw and so that I can speak to it and so that it can become digestible for people that don't draw like me, okay? So, sorry, that was just kind of a little background on the three-layered method, but, so anyway, what we're doing here is I'm taking a, a hard charcoal. And remember how I said I wanted you to take this and kind of put in some more eyelashes and stuff? A lot of this tutorial is just understanding and really feeling the charcoal out as far as like what it does, what it doesn't do. So here, this is kind of a form of cross hatching. You don't have to do this in your drawing if you don't want to, but I wanted to show you this. So cross hatching actually first came about um, in the Middle Ages, um, and it was very prominent actually in the Renaissance. And cross hatching is just a way to kind of fool the eye into um, different values. And not only different values, but if you do it right, uh, certain textures um, as well. So it's just um, a way to play with the charcoal. And because this hard charcoal has the most amount of binder in it, what you'll find is that, uh, you know, as, as you can see, it actually holds a very, um, an actual, an actual higher value. It's, it's a lot higher in value than the soft charcoal and the medium charcoal. And, uh, the reason why is because it's, it's literally half glue, right? So that's, that's why it has this certain type of look on paper. And then as you bring your cross hatch closer and closer to the, to the center of the face, you just lift up nice and light. And then the cool thing is if you don't like the way this cross hatching looks, I'm going to show you how you can take a brush and you can hit it and blend it real nice. And it kind of takes away the kind of the roughness of that charcoal because even with hard charcoal, especially when you're doing something like this, that grittiness is just part of the medium. So, so then the question becomes, okay, well, how do I, how do I rein that grittiness in? Right? How, how do I, how do I tame it? So I'll show you how to do that with brushes. But I hope that um, you're starting to kind of get a good feel for charcoal, you know, as far as what it does and what it doesn't do and what it looks like when you apply it a certain way. And, and that's, that's really what this video is all about. I'm just trying to kind of explain it the best way I know how. The cool thing about the three-layered method is it's a proven method, right? I know for a fact that it works and it works very well. 
and it's simple. Um, I was talking, I was talking to another artist about it, and we were talking about the, we were comparing charcoal to graphite, and you know, like a standard graphite the toolkit has like twelve different grades, you know, as far as like the hardness and the softness of of the graphite. Where with the three layer method, um, it's soft, medium, and hard. Right? It's a much it's a much simpler approach. So. Um, and he was just talking about how he really, he was really enjoying the method. So, but, but Hey, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a lazy, I'm a lazy artist, man. That, you know, it's, it's funny. Bill Gates said that he has a tendency to hire lazy people because they'll find the quickest way to get something done. And so through, through being lazy, you tend to devise, um, solutions that are just very simple very straightforward, but at the same time, super effective, right? The job gets done. The problem gets solved. And fairly quickly, right? Fairly quickly. Okay. So here, I think I'm just going to take a little bit more of this, this hard charcoal. And this is just kind of a trick you can do to try to sell that that illusion of that of that underlying form right underlying form um, next to proportion th those are two of the hardest things to really uh, nail right and uh, and sell to your viewer when it comes to drawing but so much of the time it's just just implying that something is round, right? Kind of like this. All right, so now as promised, I'm gonna take an elf brush and believe it or not, this is literally a brush, an angled brush from a makeup kit, <laughs> okay? And uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna blend this out, just like this, just like this. And what we're doing is kind of like what we did with the number six brush before. We we want to establish that form of the eyeball itself as it sits um, uh, in the the skin. So we want to run our brush right right up next to the edge, right up next to the edge, just like this. Just like this here. But we don't want to run that charcoal all the way across because we want the variance there, right? We, we want the separation from a slightly lower value to that, that extremely high value, that whiteness, right? In the, cent in the center uh, of the eye. And this just helps to, like I said, give that eye that illusion of that third dimension. And then while we're here, you can also go in if this is if this part's gritty and you just dab the paper, right? You just push the charcoal into the paper like this. And what this does is this gives you a form of gradation. So it gives you those smooth transitions uh, across all of your different uh, values. And it just softens the overall look up, right? When you look at someone's eye, it, their eye isn't gritty, right? Not in real life, it's smooth. Right? It's nice and smooth, and so we want to make sure that uh, we convey that same uh, that same look on paper. Then you just kind of hit your cross hatches like this with the brush. You can set your brush on its side like this, and you can imply. You can imply a line right there, just like that. It's it's literally that simple. That's that's how quickly you can imply lines and and uh, underlying form uh, in your drawing. It's nice and light. A couple passes, a couple passes, and then and then give it a look. And if you want to go smoother uh, in your gradation, a couple more passes. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my number six. I'm just going to blend this out a little bit more, a little bit more. The main difference between the number six and the elf brush is the number six just has a wider head on it. And so because of that, it I can push a lot more charcoal with it 
and, uh, and just blend a lot faster and move a lot quicker. And I was taking my smudger here and just kind of blending out some of these eyelashes. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but if you feel that the need is there and you want to get rid of some of that grittiness, if it doesn't fit your aesthetic, then, uh, then you can definitely do that. So as promised, here's that uh, what that high value retrieval looks like with uh, with your your erasers. This is a Mono Zero eraser. I'll have the link to this little guy in the description of this video as well, if if you don't already have one. But what this is called is this is called um, retrieving high values. And uh, the cool thing about it is, like I said, it just one of the reasons why charcoal is one of my favorite mediums is because it is very forgiving, right? So here we're able to go back through and we're able to continue to accentuate the value scale, right? A complete black, complete white, and everything in between. We're able to continue to add detail work long after we've stopped using our charcoal. And you know, when it comes to high values in general, there's two different approaches that you can use um, with the three-layered method. You can do what I'm doing right now, right? The high value retrievals, or you can do what they call saving your high values, which is where you don't put any charcoal on the paper and you leave that value um, to be a high value. You leave it to be white space. So in other news, um, I am on Skillshare. So if you enjoyed this uh, drawing tutorial, I have a whole bunch more step-by-step uh, -step drawing tutorials on Skillshare. I'll provide a link to my profile in the description of this video for you. Um, I'm also on Patreon, so if you'd support uh, the brand on Patreon, I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you learned one or two things in this video, and stay happy, stay healthy, and remember, never stop drawing.